Uh, so my name is James Siddle. Uh, I work for Digital Science, which is a subsidiary of Macmillan Publishing. And we develop tools and information services uh, for scientists. So specifically, I work for SureChem. Uh, we annotate patents to provide chemistry data for drug discovery, and we automatically annotate patents. Uh, we also provide the technology that you find uh, the, 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 that performs the chemical annotation for nature.com. Uh, in the SureChem data set, we have around 10 million documents and about 1.2 billion annotations in total. Um, now, I'm going to talk about uh, automated annotation systems and the different roles that people play in such systems and how they make them possible. Uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about what automated annotation is and why you should care about it, what makes it difficult, uh, the opportunities that exist for applying it, for making it easier as well, and the roles that people play in facilitating that automation. I'm going to use a specific system, which is the SureChem annotation pipeline, um, as a concrete example of how such systems can work in practice. On the final slide, I've got a, a simple example that you can actually go and apply yourselves uh, today. So a very uh, kind of simple starting point. So first of all, what is automated annotation? So for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to define it as being the automated detection, classification, and disambiguation of things in stuff. So the examples that I'm most familiar with are that of chemistry, so chemical names and structures, which we find in patent documents and in associated images. Uh, but in theory, any type of thing can be detected and identified. So why is this important? Uh, you probably already know this, but the volume of human-generated content is already vast and it's going to grow. Um, and automation supports all of those good things that we've been talking about, so displaying known facts, making it easy to navigate the content we're interested in, uh, connecting hitherto disconnected but related content, and the systematic analysis of vast uh, corpora. So ultimately, it opens the door to new discoveries by realizing that potential of connecting the sum of human knowledge. Uh, but to do that, we have to automate, I believe. Now, it's not easy. Uh, there are so many types of things to annotate, and every classifier requires specific expertise to build. And what we need to annotate keeps changing, and it's going to continue to change. There are differences in understanding and in perspective and agenda about what things are and about what they mean. And these are inherent problems, inevitable, and they're perpetual. The volume of data to annotate is astronomical. Uh, the quality is variable. Sometimes it's absolutely terrible. So patent data, we have some real problems with uh, bad data. And there's also likely to be resistance to opening and connecting information. So there are some pretty serious challenges to achieving that goal. So there is hope, though. Um, there are opportunities that we can exploit to make it easier to annotate and to automatically annotate. So not everything changes at the same rate, and sometimes there are systematic patterns that we can make use of. Standards can provide stability if they exist, and we can build annotation services that actually embrace and acknowledge ambiguity. Uh, we can utilize a vast willing pool of human volunteers or paid um, human annotators on the internet to uh, provide disambiguation and regulation of that automation process. Uh, we can employ vast, cheap computing power for data processing, machine learning, and for searching. And we can build dynamic, flexible, focused services that allow on-demand annotation to simplify adoption. So that's all a bit kind of hand-wavy. So here's a concrete example. Um, this is the SureChem annotation pipeline. Um, and I'm just going to talk through briefly how it works in practice. Um, I'll point out the ways in which we've made use of some of those opportunities, um, and I'll describe how people, uh, the role that people play in making automation possible. So first, we push a stream of patent documents into our pipeline as they're released by different patent authorities. It's about 10,000 documents a week that we process. Um, we apply entity extraction to every document, so natural language processing, machine learning, dictionaries, to systematically identify chemical names and positional information. Now, the key things to note here are that we're focused on chemistry, which is relatively static. We also utilize systematic patterns in what are mostly standardized chemical names uh, to reliably identify chemical text. Um, we use a large volume of human-curated chemical names for patents as training and test data. Having detected names, we then disambiguate synonyms, so you can have many synonyms for a single chemical. Um, we utilize name to structure tools that are readily available, um, some of which are open source, some proprietary. Uh, and that's to give us chemical structures. Uh, the good thing is chemistry has well-adopted standards around chemical representations, so it's possible to do that. After disambiguating, we actually go on to reambiguate because 
not every tool is capable of processing every name. So we apply multiple name to structure tools, meaning that for, uh, we may get multiple structures for a name. Now, we actually embrace that ambiguity and we expose that information in our uh, data set. We also, because we're processing bad data, we sometimes have to apply OCR, so optical character recognition, correction. So given names that have um, uh, transposed characters or misrecognized characters, that sort of thing. Now, we, we uh, use heuristics for this, but it would, uh, it, it's possible that we could use more sophisticated techniques. techniques. Uh, this is an area where we could do much better. Now, in addition to text content, we actually process a second stream of data. That is, we retrieve chemical images and chemical attachments from uh, the patent authorities. So chemical images are just structure diagrams, and the chemical attachments are pre-annotations provided by the patent authorities. And so we detect the chemicals in those images, and we process those chemical attachments. So the point is, we're trying to draw on as, much, uh, as many sources of chemistry as we can to provide high coverage, though potentially at the price of uh, precision. Having processed all of that data, we then have to standardize and to check all of the, the data that we've got, all the structures. Now, because we're automated, uh, we, we have such a vast quantity of data that we have to process, we have to filter. And so we apply consistent filtering and safeguards to try to filter out the crap that we do get sometimes. So we use various medicinal properties that are clear indicators of spurious chemistry. Uh, all of the above we expose via a RESTful web service, making it easier to, uh, to search, to display, and to export. So we, we allow searching and exporting across all structures, even when there's ambiguity. Um, and we provide this service to a, uh, the, the simple web service to ease adoption, uh, which is in contrast to many incumbents in this area. Uh, and finally, we allow manual curation of the resulting annotations. Now, this is a necessary step for certain key documents, such as the chemistry on nature.com, because uh, incorrect structures will be unacceptable. Uh, this also allows feedback into the entity extraction and the structure generation process that we have. Now, we do all of this in the cloud, uh, which allows very large-scale data processing and flexible scaling. So just to summarize the key points here, we're focused on a fairly static domain, which allows us to automate. We utilize standardized naming and chemical representation. Uh, we disambiguate to the extent that we can, but we don't hide those disagreements where they exist. We use large quantities of human curated data for training and for testing of machine learning models. Uh, we do all of this in the cloud, making our data processing easier and cheaper to host and to scale. And we provide simple, easy to use APIs to ease adoption. So uh, where do people fit into this picture then? Well, the six main areas that I've identified. Uh, they provide training and test annotations, so dictionaries, annotation examples, search terms, the things that people are interested in. And these allow the development of automated classifiers and the disambiguation of resulting annotations. Uh, they build the tools and the services to take the content and to classify all the things. So expertise in machine learning, natural language processing, image processing, uh, specific domains such as chemistry, etc. And these are foundational components of, of automation. Um, they collaborate to build and apply standards. So we make use of SMILES and INSHI standards and catalog numbers. These are core to uh, the SureChem product. And they support disambiguation and linking. Uh, they customize annotations to provide corrections and expert feedback. So this is providing alternative perspectives, interpretations, and feedback on classification quality. Um, they also provide feedback through brute force application um, of uh, systems such as mechanical touch, which is something that we've experimented with but haven't uh, applied in anger. Um, so it's, it's something where careful interaction design is needed and careful utilization of any captured data because niche entity types such as chemistry really do require expertise. So you need to know how to very carefully um, capture information uh, in, in uh, crowdsourcing. And finally, they can pre-annotate. So uh, the, the patent authorities provide us with what are called complex work units, uh, which are essentially chemistry data that's provided for us. And these avoid the need for automation in the first place, or, or for, uh, but uh, they should be taken with a pinch of salt. So we, uh, yeah. Uh, now the last thing I just wanted to mention was uh, how you can go and apply some automation yourself. So um, it's tough, um, so I'd recommend getting someone else to do it for you. Now we, we basically have, um, a number of internal web services that SureChem provides, for example, to Nature, and also prototypically to some of the other portfolio companies um, uh, related to digital science. Uh, but for wider consumption, I'd actually recommend a service called Cybyte. I, I have, a, have a look at this. Um, it's actually really interesting. So what they do is uh, they provide a web service that accepts arbitrary text 
and returns positional uh, annotations and disambigu ent disambiguated entities. So they support life science entities such as genes, proteins, names of companies, and bio various biological entities. And this is an example of a command that you can submit uh, just to do some automated annotation right now. And um, last slide. So here's an example of the resu result that comes back. So you have, um, I, I won't try and go through, through this in detail, but essentially it's identified the three main um, important entities there. So two drug names and a company. So GlaxoSmithKline, Avandia, and Flovent. Um, so in summary, um, automa automated annotation is hard, but crucial to linking information together. Um, and I'd recommend going out and trying it yourself right now. That's all I've got to say.